I'm Trace and this is D News and this is the moon. We used to visit, we used to call. Sister Moon is sad. It's big, it's our friend. Why aren't we there? What's going on? Last Friday was the 40th anniversary of the Apollo 17 mission. What, you're not, you're not familiar with the Apollo 17 missions? The sixth and final manned moon missions launched December 7th, 1972, landed on the moon December 11th, 1972 with astronauts Eugene Cernan, Ronald Evans, and Harrison Schmidt, their three-day mission to explore the moon, to take iconic photos, test equipment, and ride around on a lunar rover. Well, it's been 40 years since we've been to the moon. 40 years. And now we're going back to the uh, to the moon. We're going back to the moon, not to the future. At least that's the plan. NASA's planning a mission to asteroids, to the moon, and even to Mars. Manned missions. Harrison Schmidt, astronaut Apollo 17, you, maybe you remember from just a second ago. He thinks that we should skip the asteroid and go right to the moon. Maybe we should listen to him. You know, he has been there. Then there are private space companies and other governments that all want to go to the moon. But why? What is the big deal about the moon? Let me tell you, from a purely business perspective, the moon can offer a variety of advantages and resources unimagined here on Earth. Asteroids bring rare minerals to Earth, but they burn up in our atmosphere. The moon doesn't have an atmosphere, so it's gonna have more of those rare minerals. Things with fancy names like platinum or titanium or iron or helium-3, which is found in vast quantities on the moon, but is extremely rare here on Earth and could be used to make cleaner, better nuclear fusion. Not to mention the microgravity would be great for seniors. Think the you know, senior home up on the moon, no joint pain, just bouncing around, having a great old time. There are so many things that we don't know about what's up there that the things that we do know are really exciting because it's like the tip of the iceberg. The resources are just there waiting for us to go get them. So let's start a moon rush. The moon could also be a base of operations to explore the lunar structure, visit passing asteroids, or launch future missions to Mars and you know beyond. Not to mention that no atmosphere means better views for telescopes and you know sometimes you just need to get out of the house and take a look around to really see things for what they are. Inspirationally, there is no greater drive than exploration. Space exploration in the 60s brought us a whole generation of scientists and engineers dreaming of jetpacks and flying cars in the city of tomorrow and all of that came from exploring space and the moon. There's a company in Colorado run by former NASA managers that's offering to take anyone who can pay to the lunar surface. 25 countries have signed up so far and they can afford the $1.5 billion price tag. What if like Lance Bass buys a ticket and we don't? Does that mean that the bass singer of NSYNC has a greater interest in space exploration than the United States of America? Are we really okay with that? So what is the big deal about the moon? In short, everything. Business can benefit, government can benefit, people can benefit, and if you're worried about cost, the entire NASA budget is less than half of a cent out of your tax dollars, so the moon is cheap. So let's go, who's with me? Come on, let's go. Obviously, I am passionate about this topic, but what do you think? Should we be going to Mars, the moon? Should NASA have its budget up? Should it be cut? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to DNews so that you can get all three of our videos every single day. You can also subscribe to us on Facebook and Twitter and find us on iTunes. Thanks for watching. I'm Trace. Catch you later.